This is a video which has been a long time coming now, and with every video of ours that Pele features in, the need to do it just became more and more apparent. The idea that Pele is a fraud, or even that he isn't one of the greatest footballers of all time, is one that I wasn't aware of before setting up this YouTube channel 10 or 11 months ago. I'm aware that it is an idea largely perpetuated by a prominent football-based YouTube channel, and I have no interest in denigrating them. I'm sure they have just fallen victim to misinformation produced elsewhere. However, as someone who has watched hours of footage of Pele playing and has a keen interest in the history of the game, it seems only right to address the balance. So today, I'm going to take a look at the seven main arguments used to dismiss Pele's credentials as an all-time great and hopefully give a more balanced and credible view on him. Here are our seven reasons why calling Pele a fraud is ridiculous. Poor quality of opposition. An argument that I hear time and time again about Pele's supposedly embellished greatness is that he only stood out or scored prolifically because he was playing against rubbish players. The main justification for this argument is that Pele spent his best years playing in Brazil, and the only other league he played in was the NASL. During Pele's career, the best Brazilian players played in Brazil, not Europe, making the Brazilian league very competitive. Imagine if every player from Neymar to Thiago Silva, Paulinho, Coutinho, Firmino, Fred and Marseille spent their entire careers in Brazil. The Brazilian league would be a strong one. Now remember that Brazil were an infinitely stronger force during Pele's career than they are now. That meant the domestic game in Brazil was far from being poor. In the 1962 and 1963 Intercontinental Cups, Santos beat Benfica 8-5 on aggregate over two legs and AC Milan 7-6 on aggregate over three legs. Benfica and AC Milan were considered the two finest European club sides of the 1960s. Santos beat them both and Pele scored nine goals in five games against them. His record during Santos' tours of Europe was similarly emphatic. Factoring his displays in the World Cup and the claim that Pele's success was down to playing against poor players quickly begins to unravel. He was just in a great team. This is one of the arguments which I find the most amusing. People, sometimes in the very same sentence, will claim that Pele was only great because he was in a great team, whilst also claiming the league he played in was dreadful. Where do they think his great teammates played their club football? The idea that Pele only did well because he was in a great team is one also occasionally made about Lionel Messi, and it's pretty daft in both cases. The fact that Pele still stood out at club and international level when surrounded by world-class players is inadvertently admitting his genius. Even among stars as gifted as Garincha or Jairzinho, Pele was still seen as Brazil's linchpin and most dangerous player. Goal scoring record. The age old discussion of Pele's goal scoring record is one which we should now be able to put to bed. Pele's claim that he scored over a thousand goals is of course a bit daft, and one which I think has done more bad than good for his legacy within the game, but that's not to say he didn't score a phenomenal number of goals. In officially recognised matches, yes officially recognised, for Santos, New York Cosmos and Brazil, Pele scored a total of 784 goals in 855 games. Now, a great many of those goals did come in Sao Paulo's regional Campeonato Paulista, which it would be fair to assume was of a lower standard than the National League, but in every league, every level, regional, domestic or international, Pele's goalscoring record was always superb. The fact that he scored prolifically in less competitive leagues is hardly an argument against him when he was also prolific against the best teams on the planet. Football is better now. Boring. <laughs> this is a pretty boring old argument that you hear in regard to a hatful of stars of yesteryear, but particularly Pele, so it's one which we must address. It is obviously true that football, like virtually every sport, has come on leaps and bounds since the 1960s. Diet, discipline, and training regimes have all improved, and the game is much faster now. However, it is a level playing field. So a player in the 1930s was playing against players with the same level of dietary and coaching expertise as his opponents, just as a player in 2018 would be. So write off Pele because he played his football half a century ago would also mean writing off the likes of Maradona, Gascoigne, and even your favourite players of the late 1990s and early 2000s since football has come a long way in even the short period of time since then. Put simply, you could only judge a player in their own era, and to dismiss a player from the pre-war era because they didn't yet know that smoking was bad for them would be patently unfair. He never played in Europe. There are two points to this one really. Either people are suggesting that Pele didn't play in Europe because he wasn't good enough, 
which is balmy to the point of diagnosable insanity, or it goes back to the first point, and they think domestic football in Brazil was rubbish, so the fact Pelé never played in Europe means he can't be considered as an all-time great. Since we've already addressed the latter, we'll just discuss the first of those two here. When Brazil won the World Cup three times in 1958, 1962, and 1970, every single one of their players played domestically. The likes of Jalma Santos, Nilton Santos, Grincha, and Pelé could have walked into any team in the world. They didn't because that wasn't the norm, not because they weren't capable. Okay, I think that covers that one to be honest. But he was injured in 1962, and Brazil still won. I have seen it argued that Pelé wasn't that important to Brazil because he got injured and they still won the 1962 World Cup, which is true. The 1962 World Cup was the tournament which aligned best with Pelé's prime as a footballer. It was, therefore, a travesty that he got injured in only Brazil's second match, and a mark of his greatness that he is still considered one of the tournament's greatest ever players, despite barely featuring in 62. In Brazil's first game, Pelé assisted the first goal and beat four players before slotting past the Mexican goalkeeper for his country's second. In the next game against Czechoslovakia, his tournament came to an end. Brazil, inspired by the magnificent form of Garincha, still went on to claim the title. Kudos to them. This argument would hold weight if anyone was arguing that Brazil weren't a good team and were only made great by Pelé. I have never seen that argued and I would never make that claim myself. The fact that they won a tournament without him is a mark of their class, but not a slight against Pelé in any respect. Well, he was never the top scorer at a World Cup. Pelé never won a World Cup Golden Boot, in case you didn't know. In 1958, age 17, he was the second top scorer to Just Fontaine. In 1962, he got injured in Brazil's second match, having scored once. In 1966, he scored once before being brutalised and injured again and in 1970, he scored 4 goals, but Gerd Muller took the golden boot with 10. All in all, Pelé scored 12 goals in 14 games at the World Cup, which isn't bad for a player who missed most of the two tournaments, which fell during his peak years. Had he been fit throughout 62 and 66, it's likely he would be the tournament's all-time top scorer, and Brazil may have won 4 World Cups rather than 3 during that period. As for the argument that this stops Pelé from being an all-time great, I'd ask, who do you consider to be the greatest footballer of all time? Diego Maradona was never the top scorer at a World Cup. Lionel Messi has never been the top scorer at a World Cup. Johan Cruyff was never the top scorer at a World Cup. Cristiano Ronaldo has never been the top scorer at a World Cup. And Alfredo Di Stefano never even played in a World Cup. So if never picking up the golden boot means you have to rule Pelé out, you'd best rule those five out too. So that's it for the top seven. Thanks for watching, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe to HITC7s.